Hey guys, Footer here, and welcome to Footer's How To's. Today we're stood outside the Dust Brigade instance, so I need some infusers for my Gimpy Crat. So I figured I'd run through one of the Dust Brigade instances for you. Where we're stood at the moment, we're in um, EW. It's up the top, sort of in the middle. And if you've completed your DB quest, you can use your codes to get here. If not, you can take the fixed grid. 10R is pretty close, so is 10M. Doesn't really matter. Or you can use your codes. There's three instances here, you've got DB1, 2 and 3. Um, as you can see, there's three portals here. Think of them like a podium. That one will be DB1, that one's DB2, and this one is DB3. I need some infusers, they all drop slight different loot. DB3 has sort of unique loot. It has um, a helmet, which none of the instances drop. It also has modules and a special bracer specific for DB3. DB1 and 2 drops uh, the same ar armor items. DB2 drops some infusers and a different bracer to the DB3 one. I need some infusers, so gonna be doing DB2, which is this one on the left. So this instance is pretty simple, there isn't much to it, it's mainly just a tank that's packed with a couple of tricks. Um, she spawns a couple of towers which will go through when they spawn. Um, there's two different types of towers, there's blue and a red, and they both do different things. Nothing major if you're paying attention. There's also a cloud wave which spawns a little cloud from um, one of the platforms. You need to go jump on it before you get killed basically from the DOT. And there's also a warp which stuns you. Um, it's mostly stunned everyone, it can leave a couple of people out. But again, nothing major, mostly just um, tank and spank. Oh, let's not forget my props. Just waiting for our big friendly tank to wake up. There we go. So it starts off with this little entrance and the whole playfield is basically just a massive ring and with the mobs on the outside you can just run straight past those and then it's catwalks. That was a bit of a sucky aim shot. So as you can see, there's like four separate parts of the catwalks. Um, they're all just copies of each other, exactly the same. With this rock that the boss stands on to start with in the middle. So the first thing I'm going to cover is don't fall down. I'm not sure if I look down if you'll be able to see much. You can see these little platforms down here. If you do get stuck and you fall down, you'll have to run clockwise onto those platforms, which I, I think is actually just falling down right now, so I would love to show you that, but I can't. Yeah, you just have to run around clockwise on all four platforms, there's one on each, each side, and eventually you'll get teleported back up into the corridor where we started. If you don't do it quick enough, you'll get a DOT, which is pretty brutal. Well, at the end of the video, I'll jump down and show you all what I mean, how to get back up, but it's pretty simple. Only takes a few seconds. Okay, so this is one of the first towers. This is Blue Tower. That's you can see by the big blue shield. I try and hit the boss, and it's just a reflex shield. That's all it does. So when the tower spawn, they'll spawn on the outer ring. Now, you can actually spot the towers, there it is, through the cracks. 
they can spawn in different places on the outer ring. So you have to check through the cracks first before you go. Otherwise you'll waste your time running around the rings and attracting the ads. So it's this strange grand artifact we have to kill. Side note for docks, um, isn't really a dock um, role to kill towers. But you can actually team heal your mates from inside here. Even though there's no direct line of sight, it still works, which is pretty handy. So yeah, once that tower was dead, the shield would have dropped. And now the boss is back here, so that's the blue tower phase. Red tower is exactly the same. You have to run out, find the tower and kill it. Only the red tower has a different effect on the boss, which I'll cover when it comes around to it. Don't get uh, the warp confused with the blue tower as there's another big blue beam of light when she walks. A lot of people get confused and start running around and moaning they can't find the tower. Since the balance um, they made you can see land a lot easier on boss mobs, so you don't really need a craft list to be more, we just have a officer and a martial artist, two of my orphans kindly offered to help. So yeah, the UBT is just as good as a malaise. No need for a crack really. Ah here we go, we have Red Tower. So Red Tower only affects the range professions and you get a debuff in your NCU. This is a debuff. Basically, any ranged hit will actually heal the boss. So, melee can carry on, you can debuff, you can nuke, pets can attack, but any ranged hits will like, in fact heal the boss, which is pretty irritating when somebody doesn't realize it and carries the shooting. When I'm farming this, I usually just do it with me on the dock and somebody playing a force or a soldier or something on the tank. Um, if the tank runs away, everyone gets warped in the field, so I tend to go as the dock. I keep them healed with team heals, but I also like to dot the towers, fire off my full perk chain, and run back in and just let it die on its own. That way I can get back to healing the tank ASAP. Soldier can AMS while you go get it, or you can pop a um, so an enforcer can pop any absorbs or stuff like that. Right, this is the cloud phase, as you can see, I was snared for a bit. Then the snare wears off, and you have to run and jump on the cloud. You don't have to snare on it for long. You will see this in your vicinity, the ringing in your ears stop, and your vision clears. That means basically you're immune to the dot that the boss will ask if you didn't get on the cloud. And it also clears the inner debuff that you may have saw when I was trying to heal. Just power hungry today. Warp I was talking about. Um, if she can't hit somebody, she gets a bit annoyed and walks you all back. Normally, um, I get away with it as a dock, but sometimes it does still happen. That's why the tank doesn't run out and get the towers, because it'll just constantly get walked back. Right, that ad there. Um, let me come back over here so I can show you. I had an aggro on that ad. Oh, he's falling off anyway. As you saw, I had aggro, so I jumped over to a different platform. If you have a crack, you can calm it. But most people are just used to jump on the platform. Mobs can't actually follow through the platform. Sometimes they run around the outside and um, they'll eventually get back to you in a couple of minutes, but then you just jump again and they're gone for a few 
single minutes. It's the most effective way I'm just dealing with those ads. They don't really tend to follow you. Pet professionals gonna have a bit of trouble in this instance as well, trying to get their pets to actually get onto the right platform to attack the boss. Normally what they can do is they just jump off the platform where the boss is stood and then tell their pets to attack and that usually works. Oh, got a cloud face. Managed to grab that before I um before I manage the cloud. That's the debuff you get from the cloud. See it and it's your phase and your limits and it will also cast a moment from you eventually. And that's the dot you will get if you don't jump on the cloud. It hits pretty high, it hits 28 times the last minute. Um, so yeah, pretty deadly especially for low HP forces and stuff like that can usually handle it if the dot keeps you healed, but you, you want to avoid it for the sake of jumping on a cloud, it's pretty simple. Just make sure the snare is cleared before you run and jump. I think I will mention is um, you can get a bit unlucky sometimes with the warps, as you can see I've just been stunned. Oh, red towel. And what you don't want to do is jump and get stunned in mid-air because you will drop to the floor. Like our resident MA has just done there. Sometimes you get unlucky and it's just bad luck, you get stunned or snared. Cloud hits while you jump across, it happens. If you feel an earth, see an earthquake or something like that, refrain from jumping and get split. Much better be uh, safe than sorry. I started hitting before the red tower was cleared, and this is how much you heal the boss for. Roughly 25k on average. A bit irritating. If you see any of your teammates hitting them when they have the debuff, just shout at them in the team chat, I'll soon realise. Cloud and tower at the same time. So I've got a stun and a snare. What I tend to do is just walk backwards and forwards until the snare, the snare is cleared. And that way I don't run off the edge when it unclears. Many times I've seen people snare being snared and then running off as soon as they found the snare. That way you can sort of come on the spot and you're a bit safer. The enforcer charger here looks pretty funny. Um, you speed out across the platforms and run back in, it keeps you in line with the catwalks. Quite handy if you can't drop to jump. A bit of amusement. In fact, there's a couple of good places in Shadowlands for the um, enforcer charge, but I'll let you figure those out. Boss doesn't hit too hard, hits around sort of 6, 7, 8k. Um, most professional antagonists and forces, soldiers, MAs, I've even farmed it with the inner fits on, so that one okay, it's just a bit scary with low HP, but yeah, any evade professional shade or anything a bit tanky, pretty much tank this. In fact, I used to farm it with the dock and a crap before the rebalance, and I was a tank, that was doable but difficult. 
probably the easiest instance out of the, um, out of the three dust brigade instances. DD1 is it's not bad, it's pretty simple, it's a similar situation to tank and smack. But it does require a few more players, possibly. A bit more than us, I suppose, but this one's preferable. There you have it. She always um, walks you to the middle when she dies. Don't really know why they've done that. But yeah, that's um, how you complete the DB2 instance. I'll show you guys the loot quickly. The loot's preset in this, apart from one item. So it always drops the Black Bracer, an Engineer Pistol, and the Solar Note Infuser for the Energy Pistol. It will always drop two infusers for the DB2 Bracer. And it also drops these um, these items here, which are used for the Biodome upgrades. The black ones upgrade the helmet and the chest, and the whites upgrade everything else. DB2 will also drop one armor piece at random, and that's the variable in this loot drop. Everything is the same apart from that. If you drop any DB armor piece, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but it will always be one random piece. Right, I'm actually going to jump down now so I can show you what happens. There's a few ads down here. But this is what you need to do if you fall off. It's just a platform at the bottom here, circular. What you're going to do is run around. If they don't activate, that's because you need to do them in a certain order. It starts from a specific one. So you just need to keep running clockwise. Typical, it's the last one I get to. And you'll get those beams of light. And once you get all four, you can see something running in my NCU now. When you get all four, you'll get teleported back up. There you go, so that's how you do that, and it takes 10-15 seconds. You just run straight back in and back to your team. So that's DB2. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you later.